Shashi Kiran with AppSito and I'm here with Sunit Nandwani, who's a Senior Director of the Cloud Infrastructure and Platforms at eBay. And he's here to share some thoughts about what he's seeing out there from uh, the work that he's doing with new application architectures, cloud, microservices, and containers. Sunit, welcome. Thank you, Shashi. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. So <coughs> eBay, one of the largest private clouds in the world. It's huge. Yes. Talk a bit about what kind of application <coughs> architecture you have there and you know, just what your day, to, day in the life of a Sunit Nandwani <coughs> looks like. Yeah, so actually, uh, you know, our cloud journey has been there for a few years now, and you know, more than six years. And uh, eBay is uh, OpenStack-based cloud today. We started off with as a homegrown cloud, and uh, you're probably one of the, the largest deployments of OpenStack anywhere. <laughs> and uh, you know, it's it's been fun. It's been uh, interesting to see to scale OpenStack to this level. And uh, what we are now looking at is, you know, and eBay, of course, we, what we've done is that our applications, the way we run our applications is already fairly service oriented, and uh, but now we are looking very actively at some of the new technologies and saying how can we leverage containers, microservices to really evolve eBay into the next generation. And from a complexity point of view, I mean it's as complex as an environment as it can be. The scale's very, very large as you can imagine. You know, we have a few hundred thousand VM computes on the cloud and uh, eBay is, is, operates at hyperscale. So a lot of my challenges actually are around operability of the cloud, right? So what my team does is it not only does all the engineering for the cloud, we also do all the DevOps and uh, keeping the cloud humming uh, so that you know, eBay can, is always up and uh, all our applications are intact. And so what a big challenge for us right now is, uh, I wouldn't call it a challenge, but it's more about things that we have to deal with the scale. Like doing a cloud at a, at a smaller scale is probably much, much easier compared to it. At our scale, it becomes a fairly challenging task. So what we do is we spend a lot of our effort and time in the operability and manageability of our cloud. And that's where a lot of our investment is, is taking OpenStack and running it at hyperscale, at a hyper scale, uh, scale which, is, which is what our scale is right now. Yeah, I've seen eBay become a huge poster child for OpenStack, specifically for those that say it's not production ready. Um, I want to park on that for a moment, but uh, you, you talked about uh, sort of starting to explore some of the next generation with containers, sure. microservices. <clears throat> what is it you're trying to achieve by going down that path? Yeah, so as we look at our applications, like one of the things that we feel there is a big opportunity is for our uh, the operability of these applications to become much better. So, so one thing we always struggle with is we have, um, eBay did a, a good job in coming up with a service-oriented architecture at eBay. So all our applications basically use consumed services which are service-oriented. But these services themselves are still monolithic, right? And they are hard to manage. I right. would say that you know once you deploy a service, you say, okay, I, it is not something that I can scale easily and I can manage the life cycle of that service easily. It's, there's still a lot of manual touch point. Like how do I add capacity to this, uh, to this service? How do I scale it, elastically scale it? So some of those challenges are there. So that's one challenge from an operability point of view. The second challenge is actually from a developer experience point of view. From a developer experience today at eBay, all that has gone a lot better from the past. It's still not like a Docker-based model where you can take a container, a Docker container, and then just say build, ship, and run the container. And what runs in my dev environment is the same thing that runs in the production environment. I think we're a little bit ways off from that. So what we are looking at this journey um, that we are embarking on for microservices and containers is really to address those things. One is the manageability of the, of the applications that we run at eBay um, so that we can elastically scale them, we can basically horizontally scale them, we can manage the lifecycle a lot better going to a container-based model. Second thing, which is equally important to us, is the developer experience that right. we want to take to the next level. We want Docker to be a first-class citizen within, within eBay, and the experience of our developers to be that you, know, you can use Docker and modern technologies and not just have to deal with a lot of legacy builds and those kinds of things. Yeah, it's amazing how even in such a large operation such as eBay, simplicity becomes even more important. 
you, you have a tough act though of sort of uh, taking a lot of the infrastructure that you have operational at scale when you're trying to introduce these new potentially disruptive technologies as well. So how are you balancing keeping what's going humming with bringing containerization in? Is, is it disruptive? What's the magic formula? Yeah, I mean, it's a great question actually. So, and it is something that we, we always have to keep top of the mind. So even if you look at our transition from a, not a cloud environment to a cloud environment, it's something that we have to pay a lot of attention to because we have to do it very seamlessly. Right, so we have to introduce these technologies in a way that they are very, to they are not as disruptive. Right, right. so give, so having the right upgrades and having the right frameworks that can abstract out the disruption is important, and keeping things as backward compatible as possible is going to be important. So some of the things that we do, for example, are we look at we start off with the more forward-looking teams, which are ready to adopt uh, the newer technologies or who are built, new projects which are coming up. We mature the technologies out there, right? And then we start to sort of create a path for the older ones and say, well, how, what is going to be our upgrade uh, mechanism? In some cases, we are actually able to do it non-disruptively. In some cases where the paradigm shift is too dra dramatic, we may not be able to do that. But that is something, but those kinds of evolutions take a long time. So I, I, I wouldn't say it's easy. It's something that we've done already at eBay. I mean, we had an older stack called V3 and we have a new stack called Raptor. And we are still straddling both the stacks. You know, at our scale, it's not that easy to move, but it's something that we do a vertical slice at a time. And then we scale it out. So um, there is a lot of um, culture also that's changing today, um, particularly with the onset of DevOps. And you talked about developers and you talked about DevOps and then you are introducing these new changes one group at a time perhaps. So how do you synthesize and reconcile the culture within such a large organization? So culturally also, I think there is, there is a shift that is happening. It is, it's still, if, you, if I talk about eBay, eBay is still a little bit of more of a traditional environment. So my team, which actually builds and does engineers, uh, engineering and operations for the cloud, is almost completely in a DevOps mo model. Right? Okay. So, but that's my team. Uh, but uh, if you look at our application developers, right, they are not as much in the in the DevOps model today, because there is an operations team that they can call up, which will troubleshoot their applications and 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 things like that. However, as developers are looking for more flexibility, they are open to taking more accountability too. So, so a lot of our internal teams say that I want you to give me the infrastructure and get out of the way, right? And there are some teams which are sophisticated enough to do that. So there are a few teams. And, and you also, you see this more with our new acquisitions who are actually used to managing their own um, applications in the cloud. And they, they have that mindset that, you know, they are completely comfortable with managing their own infrastructure and being more in the DevOps more model. And I think this is maturation that you see in the, in the organization. And, I, and eBay is no different. So I think we are sort of living that right now, or under, undergoing that transition. I think we're far from done, but uh, we're definitely seeing a shift more and more towards the DevOps way of for teams to work. That's excellent. So for, um, let's come back to the OpenStack piece. Uh, yeah. Obviously you've, uh, you're much farther along with OpenStack compared to many others in the industry. And now you, you're also fairly mature from a DevOps perspective um, and you, you sort of have brought the culture in as well. Moving forward, especially with containerization, you're going down the path more aggressively with microservices. Uh, do you still intend to take that and have it be OpenStack based? Yeah, I think OpenStack has a place in our ecosystem because right now we get a lot of value out of OpenStack. So, so for example, the containers that we run today are on top of OpenStack. So OpenStack's taking care of some things like load balancing for us, like we use the load balancer service, we use the DNS automation, uh, we use uh, SDN heavily in our in our environment, which is fully integrated with OpenStack. So we're being able to leverage a lot of not just the core compute aspects, but a lot of the other aspects of the of the uh, OpenStack ecosystem. Now, as we look forward, we are definitely looking at running containers not just on VMs, but directly on on bare metal on physical machines. And it's something that we can still leverage OpenStack for using Ironic. And that's something that we are looking at and we're investing in. And we have bare metal capabilities within, within eBay today. But uh, 
I would say it's not an either or for us. We, whatever we are doing is very complementary to OpenStack. And we have one of the largest shops which is out there, which is actually looking at both OpenStack and Docker and containers and Kubernetes as well, and figuring out how to marry them to grip, create the best possible solution for us within, within eBay. Excellent. So for somebody who's not the same size as eBay, but is looking to sort of leverage some of the best practices you guys have going on there, what is uh, some of the advice that you would dole out to the developer or to the DevOps community on how best you can bring all of this together? Yeah, so I think one of the things that is underappreciated is, is, uh, um, is about uh, operation, obsessing about simplicity, right? Mm -hmm. so, so, you know, that's something we, we, we struggle with a lot and that's one advice that I would give to everybody is simplify, simplify, simplify. Do not add complexity to your environment. The second thing is on OpenStack. Although it works for us, for a smaller company or a mid-sized company, um, I would say evaluate your option. Running OpenStack is not easy. You know, we've been able to do it because we have a large scale. We have enough engineering investment in making OpenStack run. It's a non-trivial thing. So I would say if you are looking at a private cloud and OpenStack is your choice, I mean, it's not that it's not working for us, but at a cert, up to below a certain scale, it may not be w viable or it may not be worthwhile, right? And you might get frustrated. So look at public cloud first is what I would say. The third thing I would say is, um, you know, containers by themselves are interesting, but then when you couple containers with some cluster management solutions like Kubernetes or Mesos, I think the opportunity, the, it completely changes the game about what you can do because your, your ability to scale these, these applications horizontally, be very elastic, um, manage the life cycle of these applications actually just goes to the next level. So I would say be looking at that. And from a cultural perspective, I think it's, it's more about, you know, uh, engineering teams getting used to running their and taking accountability for, for their applications. One of the things that we do in our team is we really obsess about our operational metrics. So we have all my team members actually go in and take a look at their operational metrics every single day. We have dashboards which instrument everything, right? So that's something because if you're in the DevOps model, you have to know how your service is operating and you have to live and breathe it every day. So that's something a lot of application developers are not used to. They just write their code and, and then just forget about it. I mean, but the operational aspects of reliability, availability, what is my customer feeling when he clicks that button on the application? Is he, is he, you should know what the performance is. So all of those aspects actually need to be covered as well. So in a DevOps team actually or do obsess about operational metrics or not. And, the, and another thing I would add is, is process maturity. So um, you see that engineering teams are not very oftentimes as process uh, mature as operational teams. Like how do you do incident management? If there is a, if there's an issue, what do you do about it? How do you do change manage for your application? As a DevOps team, actually, you have to get more mature in those things. So those are all a part of the journey that as you become a DevOps shop, you actually have to get a lot better at those aspects as well. So those are just some of the thoughts that you know come to my mind as a practitioner, I would say. I can see a big uh, best-selling book in your future. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I hadn't, I hadn't thought about that, but so, you know, uh, why you never, never say never. Why not? <laughs> I mean, these are words of wisdom. Um, you have gained a lot of experience from the operational scale and simplicity that you've achieved at eBay, and you know, a lot of it could be. We haven't achieved that, it, but we obsess about it. Yes, obsession is uh, a very good prerequisite, and yes. uh, so there's a lot of learnings that others could potentially derive, not just on what to do, but more important, what not to do as well, yeah. like you said. So thank you so much for you know coming here, sharing your uh, experiences and learning, and I hope it's uh, useful for the community it's at large. It's been my pleasure, Thank you.